and welcome back to my channel. If you've been following the last couple of weeks, you know that I'm doing a new quilt top. So last week we finished with having six rows of our triangles done, but I had made the decision that I needed to make it a little bit wider, um, as I didn't want to cut the end of each of these triangles because that would bring it in too much. So instead, I'm going to add another half triangle and then a border. So I left you with me trying to figure out what fabric to use. I had made a decision, and it's this one here. I made this decision because there is similar color fabric, as well as the stars blend in really well. So our first process is going to be to cut out six more triangles, the same size as these and then we will cut them in half to put one on each end. Then create the border. In my brain, this works. If it doesn't work, well, I guess we'll find out. First thing I'm going to do is find the pattern that I had made before. I've just given this fabric a light iron, and y'all, it is beautiful. On the side, it says that it's called Timeless Treasure, but it doesn't give me a name of a designer. So I've had this fabric for a while, but I can definitely see as soon as I opened it up why I brought it. It is just stunning. But now we're going to cut it up. So the first thing we're going to do is fold it in half and straighten the fabric. Now the first thing we need to do is straighten our fabric. If you haven't done this before, because it is actually an important step, especially with quilting, because we want to get the light the cross um, threads of the woven fabric all nice and straight. But the first thing we're going to do is grab our two salvaged edge. Grab our and bring them together. It's really really new to sewing. The salvage is the edge of the fabric where it's not being cut. Um, it is usually bound off and it won't fray along that edge. If you can see at the moment on the bottom how it's all twisted with me bringing my salvages together, that's what we don't want. So we are going to just sort of slide them across until it's nice and straight. The edges are still together at the top and that you're nice and straight on the bottom, that there's no twist, twists in your fabric and that's nice and straightened. The next step is to lie that down on the table. And because our rule is not wide enough to just cut it in like that, we're also going to have to fold it one more time by bringing our salvage edge to that folded edge. There we go. And that's our fabric straightened. And use this folded edge to create a right angle to this edge. So you can see here that this fabric was cut off the roll incredibly unstraight. So I am going to need to take off all that excess fabric and straighten it up. And I'm going to place one of these horizontal lines on the fold down the bottom. Lined up the horizontal line with the fold and then I'm just going to trim that edge off. Okay, so that's what you have cut off. Now, there is a wee trick you can use as well to check that what you've done is straight. Have a look at that edge that you've cut on your ruler and check that it's you know, lying straight on there. That's pretty close. So if you have a big wonkiness like this going on, then you know that you've not done it straight and you need to do it again. But if it's lining up, if that edge that you've just cut is lining up pretty straight on there when you get it into position, which mine is, then we've cut it nice and straight. And we're ready to actually cut our pieces for our quilt. And start sort of looking at what's the best way to get these triangles out. I honestly think probably doing a cut about here. A strip that's as wide as my triangles or maybe just a tad wider so I can cut the triangles out of them. If I do seven and a half then I will get in a strip that I can 
cut these out of. Because I either need six full triangles or 12 half triangles, if that makes sense. So we know our fabric straight, so I'm just going to line that up. And then I'm just going to take my rotary cutter and cut it through. Okay, and we'll just close it up. And there we go. That's our strip that we need at the moment. Just trying to figure out if I get half triangles out this side or not, or if I'm only going to get the triangles that I've made that way, which would give me one probably. Get four out if I get it. If I only just do a solid triangle, but, um, but if it works, I could get these half triangles already out, and I think it does. I don't know, I guess we'll just start cutting and find out, um, which is probably not the most um, strategic plan, but it is a plan. So first thing I'm going to just do is cut here and here, so that I've got a sizing of the triangle. This could be a roundabout way of doing it, but we're going to give it a shot. I'm lining up my ruler on the edge of the fabric so that I know that it's still on a straight angle to that. Pop those to the side for a second and then do the same here. This one I'm going to accurately put the point of the triangle on the point on the edge of the fabric because for this one I can have the exact size the other piece I'm just going to grab it and trim the salvage off in a second so there we go so that piece is just a leftover scrap for now but a usable size scrap and I'm just gonna grab this one again and do that point of tri that triangle on there and cut this salvage off because we don't want to use the salvage. So the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to remove this off and then turn it around so that we can start creating triangles. Grab just one. Mainly because if I'm getting this wrong it at least means I'm not cutting a full pile of it wrong. <laughs> I'm going to line up the bottom edge of the template my fabric and then I'm going to cut this edge of the fabric All right, so that is my first cut like I said I'm going to do this one piece completely to make sure that I've got it right and this time I've given a half inch because remember I still actually needed to have that seam allowances and all that around but I had it on the bottom and the side so so that I can still line it up where it is I've just moved this back a half inch and I'm thinking that's going to be the key in the right size we're hoping just to check I'm going to grab one of the original pieces and I'm going to line it up to see if we are the same size or if we're a little bit bigger and no we are the same size perfect the plan is is to hopefully use one of these scraps as your half triangle on that side because these this piece itself is going to get cut in half because it's only doing half triangles on each side because that's all we want to extend each piece out. So, all working well, these four pieces I cut, I should be able to get my 12 half triangles. Cut this triangle in half, so what I would do is line up this point in the top point and cut that in half. I am going to be able to get four half triangles out of one piece. Brilliant. Well, that seemed to have worked. It's pretty okay, and that's the other end. I am still keeping trying to keep these in the order that I piled them in, as this will be the next one that will actually go below it. Um, and to match my triangles. I think the most confusing thing is actually matching your triangles. It actually 
weirdly is a bit confusing. Okay, so what's interesting is that these two triangles are actually the same shape. So the row that I just did actually has the opposites on them to this one. So that's what I had to work out. This was your triangle shape and that one goes on, so we've got side A goes on say row 1, side B goes on row 2. Not that this one goes on the left and one goes on the right, which is how my brain first thought it would work. Um, and it was getting confused, but no, it's not. So I'll show you what I, another way of meaning that. So these two rows are going to go together, so row 1 and 2. And side A goes to row 1, and then side B actually goes to row 2. Which is not how my brain thought it would work, but that's how it works. Now I'm just going to sew both ends of this up and then we'll have two rows done and then we'll cut out the rest of the triangles. Now that I've done two rows you can see a little bit more how that's going to go together. So I'm going to put these two aside and we're going to cut up the rest of the triangles. So I've sorted the triangles into A's and B's so that when I can work out if the row needs an A piece or a B piece I can just grab two and put it on them so that I can be e so it's easier for me. Um, basically because we've got an angle here we need the angle to be here so these ones are going to take that one there and so we know that it's exactly the same piece at the other end. And then over at the sewing machine I'm sewing them on exactly the same as I did the full triangles just lining them up on the edge and doing a quarter inch seam allowance. Well, I have done all six rows with adding the pink on each end. Now that I'm looking at the rows, I'm noticing that the points of the triangles are not fully straight as well as a half an inch gap between the tip of the triangle and the edge of the fabric. Now I want to reduce that to a quarter of an inch so that when I do my seams at a quarter of an inch, um, they should just touch each other when they are aligned up with the next one. So that is going to, so my next step is going to be going along and straightening up the edges so that they're ready to sew together. Get them lining up on that quarter inch. This side is actually lining up quite nicely on that quarter inch seam and then just then cut that there just to get them ready for the next step. the edges are cut and these are my little scraps that I've cut off so they definitely need it all straightening up and next I will lie it back out and make sure I put the pattern pieces back in the right order. Well the good thing is I just went and checked my phone and I did take a photo of the order so now I'm just going to put it in that order hopefully. Uh, following step to get these all together is just to fold them over and use our quarter inch seam allowance and sew all the way down. So I'm going to sew the six pieces into twos and then I'm going to sew three pieces into one. And I just think that's the easiest option. Now that it's all down to one piece, I will go around and just tidy up the sides so that we don't have extra seams in that. Again, just make sure it's nice and straight. And then we're going to start thinking about the border. For the border, at this stage I am thinking about 
adding that around but needing to decide how big a border I want to make it but I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time I don't know, playing seeing how much I kind of want to add on to it if I want to go quite a big border on both sides big one on one and a thin on the other and I think that's what I definitely want to do I just need to decide how wide I want them to be so I decided I want I liked the look of them being about an inch and a half so I'm going two inches because that will give me some seam allowance on either side which is one thing I noticed that I forgot to do on the tri last triangle was leave seam allowance. So I will show that fault when once I've sewn the border on. I'll show you what I mean by the fault I made with that. Again, we can place the rest of that fabric aside and use it for another project. Is on, but we do not want the salvage. I'm just going to trim the salvage off because we do not want to use those. I'm going to put the border across the top first and the bottom, so across the shorter sides first, and then I'll do the longer sides. So back at the sewing machine. Grabbing our quilt edge and our fabric edge. So what I've done is I've sewn the top of the border on and I have ironed it down. The following step is just to square up these edges because we're going to sew another strip down here. So my next step is to sew this one onto that edge and that will give us our border. Now the length of this strip is a bit short so I'm going to sew the part that I've just cut off together with that one. Now I've done that on this side and you can see that's my nice border on the edge. There we go. I have sewn so on all the border pieces, ironed it and squared it off, and that is my quilt top done. So move it along so you can see it all. Now the only thing that I did that was a bit wrong was when I created these triangles, I forgot to leave a seam allowance. So on the border edge, you do have a blunt corner where it takes off that seam but I think for something that I didn't have a pattern for for I was just going for it and seeing if it would work I'm really happy with how it's turned out I'm, I'll turn it around so you can see the width of it it's a great width and a really nice length for um, a knee rug or a couch blanket that's the top part of the quilt done. Um, I'm not quite sure when I will actually quilt it. At the moment I don't have any wadding so I'll have to first go out and get a wadding. Um, and it's really hot today so if we've got weather like this for a little while it might be in a couple of months when it actually cools down a little bit again. Thank you so much for watching. 